throne room of God. We experience our mental ascent through these levels as being pulled into a tunnel of light. This tunnel of light is the eye of God and is comprised of our own soul's energy being burnt off in the form of memories as our rarefied spirit penetrates through the atmosphere of our ego. The concept of a tunnel of light populated by the deceased souls of our dead relatives is as old as the original awakening to self-awareness of mankind's mind. In the biblical accounts we find Jacob's ladder and Ezekiel's wheels within wheels, signifying how Kabbalah is the body of God. In more recent art, such as this illustration by Gustav Dore for Dante's Paradiso, we see this concept expressed as a light emanating through a cloud of angels. This light, called by Buddhists the primary clear light or Elem, and said by them to have pre-existed the creation of the cosmos, is the greater light of the one spirit, and the cloud of angels surrounding it is the lesser light of the many souls. Because of the difference between being in the presence of the one true God and being in an ordinary condition of consciousness, it is often said by mystics that life is a dream and our death wakes us up. In this sense, our immortal soul acts like a guide for our mortal bodies, and the eternal spirit acts as a guide for our immortal soul. The dualism of a mental guide beside one's own ego is expressed in much mystic art and literature regarding the nature of religious metaphysics. As with Enoch, whose dream guide was named Pinamu, so too with Yeshua ben Padia, whose dream guide was named Panamea, and so too with Dante, whose dream guide was Virgil. Thus, in conceptualizing the mental state of the individual mystic, we see the seven chakras within the meditating shaman, surrounded by their aura or astral acacia. Such is the concept of the individual as God, wherein the mind with no ego is the spirit of all souls, merge into one with the body of the meditating being. This is the trance of Samadhi or Nirvana, experienced when we let go of all stress induced on us by external influences and become an open conduit channeling the flow of cosmic energy forces through us. The mind of a being in such a mental state can control outcomes just as the choice is made by a mind yet deluded by their own ego. However, in Satori, one can control the outcomes even of distant and seemingly unrelated, even unknowable, events. Just as God is the individual, so too is God the plenum. In the vacuum between the many souls exists the One Spirit. Surrounding and beyond the One Spirit are the many souls. Just as the self-mind is particulate, such that each ego is like a particle, so too is the omni-mind a wave field, such that it exists in all locations at once. This void in which the individual floats is itself alive with other individuals. Thus there is no empty space that is not occupied by some form of either matter or energy or combination of both in the entire cosmos. Beyond the cosmos, the mind can yet exist and maintain to travel. However, beyond the real universe and its combination with the multiverse of an imaginary number of parallel realities, the duality between the individual self and the plenum of others ceases to exist. In Reality, Part 2 Further Theories Part 2a Toroidal Tachyonic Thoughts As has been demonstrated, the soul is a torus. It has an exterior aspect called an acacic aura and an interior aspect the seven chakra twists in the kundalini spiral. The interior aspect and exterior aspect have the same volume, and thus are one and the same, 
a single energy field over time, such that they continually exchange places, and as one are a symbol for time, entropy, and the passage of mortal flesh into death and decay. The soul is a hologram around the body, like the multiverse of parallel dimensions is to the material cosmos. The effect of both the mind within body, within the soul, and the cosmos, inside the multiverse, inside the mind of God, both being holographic hyperspheres independently, is that together they combine to form the manifold scale levels of the cosmos, such that all are interchangeable. This means that all levels connect directly without having to pass through the others. The result of this effect is the passage of time from one moment to the next on all levels of scale, but each size on the scale at its own rate. Time passes more rapidly the smaller in physical scale one descends, and less so the larger. However, from one moment to the next, all things change over time. The past is the father and mother of the present, and the present is the father and mother of the future. Because the aura is the exterior of the soul, which the mind is the interior, and this shape is a torus or hypersphere, and because the shape of the cosmos itself forms a hypersphere whose interior sphere is any one soul, we can say the mind and soul are ubiquitous at their greatest extent with the cosmos as a map exactly overlapping its terrain, but that at all lesser levels than the entirety of space-time, this holographic hypersphere descends downward in scale causing entropic gravity to pull the matter energy of the cosmos through pinholes in the fabric of the continuum called black holes, which are simply the smallest and oldest form of matter energy particle wave. However, there is one size smaller than a black hole singularity, and thus only this form of light can escape one. This is the tachyon, which is also shaped like a torus, because the tachyon and the soul are both torus-shaped, they and the cosmos itself form a holographic hypersphere, such that tachyons permeate the entire cosmos, causing entropic gravity, which in turn is experienced by the soul as emotions, thoughts, and ideas. Thus, what we see when we look at this rendition by Aleister Crowley of the usual circle of twelve zodiac signs is the cross-section of a torus, or, expressed more simply, one half of a torus seen from the side. Here we see that, just as the diagonal bisecting a 3D cube is the square root of 3, and the diagonal across a 2D square is the square root of 2, half of a 3D sphere will appear from the side as a 2D circle, while half of a 4D hypersphere is this shape, a flattened 4D torus seen from the side. If we follow the direction of the zodiac signs labeled by the Roman numerals around the circular orbit seen from the side as the cross-section of a torus, we will be tracing out a unilinear vector around the surface of the torus, which forms the edge dividing the two halves of a hypersphere into the 4D torus seen from the side. This shape shows us the form of the torus, the tachyon, the cosmos, the soul, the mind, and the multiverse. When we apply the form of the torus to understanding the level of the mind, we find it can extend across a total of ten potential dimensions as such. One, the 1D point. Two, the circular flat 2D plane, 3, the 3D sphere, 4, the 4D hypersphere, 5, the 5D torus of a hypersphere, 6, a hypersphere inside the cross section of the 5D torus of a 4D hypersphere over a 3D sphere above and below a 2D circle around and about a 1D origin point, 
7, a sphere inside this second exterior hypersphere, 8, a circle of this second sphere, 9, an origin point inside this other circle, and 10, the point of view of someone observing this entire model from outside of it. In applying this 10D model of the mind to a torus form, we may label each size level on its multiple scales, and by doing so, may arrive at the following set of conclusions. The first dimension, the origin point. When we magnify the origin point of such a structure to its utmost, we find it expressing a holographic reflection of all the other levels within itself. This multi-layered pluralism can best be symbolized as two intersecting 3D tetrahedrons, forming a 4D hypertetrahedron or stalactahedron. The stalactahedron represents the combination of polar opposites into one single form. In the case of the 10D model of the mind, we find these dual poles correspond to fact and fiction, otherwise called truth and lies. Although there are degrees combining lies or fiction with facts, there is only one truth, the whole truth comprised of all facts, and not diluted at all by lies or fiction. The exact opposite of this one truth, then, is thus the one greatest lie ever told, the ultimate fiction. One symbolizes God exterior to oneself, the other as interior. The second dimension, the flat circular plane. This is the reflecting pool of the layers above that has as its particulate water drops the quanta or information units symbolized by the stalactahedron. As the number of these quanta asymptotically approaches infinite, via the conversion of matter into energy over time that results from particles gradually breaking apart from a mass and forming free radicals or randomly patterned energy loss as heat, the mind expands. Therefore, it is because thoughts are tachyons and because tachyons are smaller than black hole singularities and because black holes pull all matter energy and space-time toward them. Thus, as the space between black holes contracts, the space measured by the mind as tachyon thoughts expands. The third dimension, the round orb or sphere. Symbolic of the mind itself in this ten-dimensional model, this is the largest level of real consciousness. On the surface of the sphere, infinite thoughts appear as a tessellated pattern across its face, such that the closer the surface of the sphere is to the observer, the larger the tessellated shape will appear, and the further the distance of the surface of the sphere from the observer, the smaller the tessellated shapes will appear, with the single thought occupying the center of the sphere of the mind under observation, and with all other of infinite thoughts tapering out to self-terminating finitude around the outer edge. The fourth dimension, the hypersphere over time. The hypersphere in the ten-dimensional model of potential awareness symbolizes the mind over time. Animals and humans both exhibit the capacity for thought However, what differentiates self-aware humans from less self-aware animals is that humankind can focus on and derive inspiration from the knowledge of our own mortality and inevitable bodily death, while animals do not comprehend that their life will one day end. This results because the animal's attention span is short and it takes less time for it to become distracted by material reality while the human self-concept has, at its deepest core, the idea that one day the mind might cease to think, the body cease to be, and the ego's self cease to exist. It is fear of losing life that motivates our species, far beyond those of the rest of the animals, to cultivate culture.